All right, now that we're done with the walls, I'm going to start on the the whole roof. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to start at the front and the bottom here and then just build it all the way around to the back, to the top of the hatch there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the hatch area yet, but I figure I'll think about it by the time we get there. I should have an idea, but there is going to be a window on the front and we're thinking about doing a skylight on the top, so we'll have to frame those in too. Okay, so I put these those filler blocks in uh, and then made the pieces that are going to go there and then I was working on making this piece and realized I didn't need these filler blocks at all. Uh, I ended up making a 2 by 4 that's going to fit right there. So that's going to fit in right there. And yeah, we would have been fine without those end pieces. It always seems like not very much glue once you spread it out. This is the countersink tool. Help the screw sit down in there easier. So we hopefully don't sp split the wood. Alright, so just now I was able to do the side framing up the front and the start starting the top. This is all just more of that inch and a half. What is it? It's like the cheapest stuff for Doug Fur. So then I'm gonna make some horizontal pieces here, there, and then start to frame out windows and stuff. So all the framing on the trailer was done with this 2x2 two two Doug fur, which is the cheapest stuff I could get. And so I just uh, glued it and screwed it about every 3 inches on this outer edge here. Probably more screws than you need, but the screws are basically acting as the clamps for the glue. The glue is actually what's doing the work. You could probably take the screws out after this and it would be just fine with only the glue in there. So I'd make one piece and then set the next one in, mark it, cut it, put it in. Then I could set the next piece in, mark it, cut it, put it in. Don't really have to measure anything. So all these horizontal braces are, that we put in are pocket screwed into the side studs. Uh, here on this front corner, there's actually two together that were ripped so that the angles are correct when you put the plywood on the outside. Actually glued these together and clamped them together. So there, these two braces are acting as one piece, essentially. And all the studs throughout the roof here are pocket screwed into each other with glue. This top front stud is actually is also two that are glued together. And then all the window framing and stuff can be built in between these. So I've been working on the front framing today. Got that little piece down there. Um, I built the the top this this top stud here and the framing out the window here. So the front window is just a solid piece we picked up from the junkyard. Actually, all of these pieces are junkyard. That window, this door was junkyard with the key deadbolt and handle, which is why we have this one that opens the wrong way um, because it was cheap. So, and then that one we're gonna put on the street side and that one vertical next to the door for uh, the three windows and the door at the junkyard it was like 300 bucks which compared to new is very cheap um at other junkyards though i don't know it's probably on the high side for a junkyard but i don't know we were happy because just the door alone if you bought new was over 300 400 stuff like that so we got them all used we're happy as long as they're watertight which that's going to be another story we'll have to figure that out So that's gonna go right there. And then that blue line, the blue tape right there is gonna be a shelf. So there's gonna be a shelf there that we could put stuff above and then heads will be down here, pillows, window, shelf with junk on top. So the window's just, just like as high as it could go to be reasonable with that shelf. 
if the shelf wasn't there, we'd probably go a little bit higher with the window, but that's how it's going to be. And I think it's going to look fine from the outside too. So here we're getting started on building the rest of the structure back through the roof, just using glue and pocket screws on everything and uh, clamping it. And I realized that if we put that shelf above the window like we planned, then it would block the skylight on the front of the trailer. So I framed another hole for that skylight further back. And then you see the smaller hole for the roof vent. Then after moving the skylight back, we realized that the shelf was so low that we wouldn't be able to fully sit up under it where it was right above that front window. So we decided to just get rid of the shelf and move the skylight back to the front of the trailer where we initially wanted it. So we won't have the shelf in the front, but we will have the skylight where we wanted it. And it should make my life a bit easier if I end up building a roof rack on top of the trailer. So at that point the framing is done and I can start installing the sheathing on the outside of the trailer. But I thought it might be easier just to cut the insulation before doing the exterior sheathing because it's easy to get to. When I started cutting the insulation, again, I was using the box cutter, but I figured out the table saw is a lot easier. Um, and then you can kind of just use a piece of insulation, put it in the hole you're gonna you're trying to fill, and then mark the backside with a Sharpie, and then just eyeball it through the table saw. You don't have to measure anything. You can get close enough like that, and it'll pretty much just stick in the hole and stay there. Um, there's a couple pieces that I had to hold in with tape, but for the most part, they're all just a friction fit. It went a lot faster with the table saw than it did with the box cutter, but you can totally do it with the box cutter. It works perfectly fine. All right, so the insulation is done. So I used the same insulation that I used in the floor of the trailer on the front wall and the roof here. The front, we have one window. We have a skylight. We have a roof vent. And then on the back, We'll be doing the door. And the the vent did come in the mail. It's just a cheap 14 inch vent off of Amazon that kind of rolls up. Spin it right here. The whole thing opens. So that's kind of cool. And it comes with a little uh, screen on it. Didn't get the motorized one. It seemed like the cheap motorized ones were kind of crap and the good ones were way too expensive. So we'll retrofit a fan in there if we have to. And then the skylight came, but it was the wrong type. So I had to reorder it. So it'll be here soon. So the next thing to do is the exterior skins. Here I've got the first one started and it's on there with just a couple screws. You can see the issue I'm having at the edge here where I made the trailer slightly wider than four feet and the plywood doesn't quite reach to the edge. The easiest solution to this would be to just build your walls at four feet wide, of course, or you could even do slightly less so that you can use the router to trim the edge off and get like a super sharp edge. In this case, I started with a plan to have a round over on the edge and then fill any gap with like a glue and filler. Since then, I've changed my plan to just filling it in with some wood strips. This would have been easier to do if I had installed the skins flush with one edge of the trailer so that I only had to install a single wide filler on one side of the trailer than what I'm going to have to do, which is install a thin piece on each side. So I brought the trailer outside so that I could do some routing and sanding without making a huge mess in the shop. But it's nice to see it out in the light. I, I do like the proportions of it so far. I think the placement of things looks good from the outside. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is the distance from the door to the wheel once there's a fender on it, since the door opens the wrong way. I probably should have pushed that door as far forward as I possibly could, which I thought I did, but I, looking at it now, I know I could have gone a little further. So all the skins are glued and screwed into every stud, and the edges between each skin were sanded to a smooth transition. So like where that top front skin meets the bottom front skin, it's sanded so that there's a smooth transition between the two, not like a hard edge. And then I did go around all the edges with a 45 degree bit on the router. 
um, and I'll need to do that again once I put the filler strips on the outside. So in the end there will be a 45 on every side edge. I also made sure to run the router around the skylight and vent holes to get that flush edge there. So we had a box truck at work that um, it got wrecked and the box on it um, was going to salvage. So I pulled these wood slats off the sides. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It's pretty hard, but I was hoping I can use these on the trailer. I'm thinking like for the wall paneling instead of paneling on the rest of the walls and the ceiling, we could use this, cut it down. Splitting a little bit on the ends, but we'll see once we get into it. But it was the right price, which is uh, free. So we'll see what we can do with it. So I got these boards unloaded and I was able to get a better look at them. There's some splits and there's a bunch of random screws along with some countersunk holes from the original mounting screws. I cut a couple pieces to test fit in the trailer. And when I was happy with how they fit, I spent some time cleaning the rest of the stock. I removed as many of the screws as I could for the ones that were stuck, I ended up just cutting them off with the grinder and then sanding them flush. We were intending to paint the boards after installation, so I went over them pretty quickly with the belt sander. Since the faces of the boards have big countersunk holes from the mounting screws, I decided to have the backs of the boards be the side that you'll see inside the trailer. Uh, I'm going to start cutting them and placing them in the trailer. So here's the setup with some infeed tables here for the chop saw. And uh, it's super hard wood. Um, like I'm not a wood expert here, but I have this other stuff over here. This, I bought a bunch of pieces of, I think this is cherry. Not sure, it's really hard too. It's almost like when you're working with it, um, you have to pilot it. Like you cannot, you can't put a screw in it. It's just so hard um, and it's more like it reminds me more of like metal machining because you have to get the whole the pilot hole exactly the right size you have to get the countersink exactly the right size because the screw is not going to move the wood and this reminds me of that so i don't know if it's cherry um i've heard of like epe is really hard antique is really hard but i kind of doubt they would use like anything that's really expensive in these trucks like clearly they're looking for a hardwood, but I don't know um, how much, what, you know, what they're willing to spend. So I don't really know what type it is. If you know what kind of wood this is, let me know, but. So now that the boards are ready for install, I was able to start putting them in the trailer. I started at the bottom and the front and worked my way up and towards the back. I used glue and two inch nails with the pneumatic gun. The other option I considered was installing them with screws, but without glue and that would have allowed me to add wiring in later on. I still didn't know what I wanted to do for wiring at this time, so being able to take them off later would have been cool, but I decided against doing that in favor of a cleaner looking install without screw heads showing. The interior width of the trailer is 46 and a half inches, so all I had to do was cut these boards at that length until I got up to the window. For that window board, I had to make a notch, but I left a bit of a lip so I could trim it flush with the router afterwards. On the edges of the windowsill, I wanted to use glue only without nails. This is possible since I had access to get clamps in there. I wanted to have this area clear of nails so that I didn't have to worry about hitting any metal when I came back through with the router after the fact. And of course, none of these boards are exactly straight. So as I went up the wall, I noticed the top board was out of level. Once I saw that, I decided to start working from the top down so that when they met in the middle, I could make two filler pieces to take up the different size gaps on the left and right in a location that's not very noticeable when you look at it. Since these filler pieces had to be cut lengthwise, they ended up with one edge being sharp and one edge being the factory rounded edge. To reproduce that factory edge, I just set up the router table with a quarter inch round over a bit, and the edge that that produced was so close that you can't tell the difference. So after that front wall was done, it was just more the same up through the ceiling. At this point, I had decided to do all the wiring external to the wall just to make it easier and cheaper up front. If I had more of a budget, I think I would have planned all the electrical out ahead of time and put all the wiring in there before skinning the walls. But in this case, I knew that to keep costs down, I just needed to stick with as minimal of an electrical system as I possibly could. 
but also I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that I wasn't going to be able to add wires back in later. So I just found a pair of cheap interior and exterior lights that I can install for a basic setup for now that could be replaced with higher quality units later if needed. Either way, we'll probably add LED light strips to the interior for more control. For the wiring, I salvaged some speaker wire from an old car audio project. It's a bit oversized for this application, but it should work. I used the router to carve channels into the boards as I was installing each one. It was kind of a pain and I'd probably do it different if I was going to do it again. I'd probably actually put the wires in the insulation like everybody else does. The two pairs of wires are run to the battery box area where I'm going to mount all of the electrical equipment. I'll probably do a full episode on the electrical system later. To finish out the ceiling, I installed the rearmost board with a chamfer on the edge. I did have to install some more custom width pieces in a couple spots to take up gaps from warped boards, but they're not that noticeable. The last piece was a pretty thin sliver of a piece that I made sure to install where the cabinets will be so that it won't be seen. Even with these small issues, I'm pretty happy with this install. The whole interior looks really good, and we're trying to decide if we even want to paint it. Even with all the screws and splits left in it, it looks pretty good. And the last thing I needed to do was trim all the edges flush using the router. Thank you. 